Welcome to Calibration Administration Process Descriptions, and thank you for your interest. We hope you'll take time after this short presentation to explore the other Triad Unlimited presentations on YouTube, follow us on LinkedIn, and visit our website to see all of our services and training offerings. The first function, Calibration Administration, defines the rules for calibration program requirements, ensuring program compliance, use of contracted services, and instrument lifecycle activities. Just like every AMP function, the Calibration Administration function contains four processes. First, there are Calibration Program Requirements. Then there are Calibration Program Compliance, Calibration Contracted Services, and Instrument Lifecycle. Implementing Calibration in Administration provides several benefits. It ensures calibration program is aligned with regulatory and other governing requirements, which reduces exposure to findings during process audits. Instrumentation qualification and calibration managed by a documented program ensures product integrity throughout all manufacturing and production processes. It aligns contracted calibration processes with internal processes, promoting adherence to quality standards. And having processes for instrumentation removal from service ensures no uncalibrated instrument is installed in an operating process. The purpose of calibration program requirements is to ensure the necessities for setting up a calibration program are known and adhered to. There are requirements to be met by compliant calibration programs. Here are some of them. The program must align with all governing directives, conformance standards, and regulatory agency mandates. These can vary by location and industry, but are typically easy enough to identify and apply within a well-constructed program. This element is necessary to ensure all instruments that need to be calibrated are identified. Instrumentation must be classified to some level of criticality, such as critical or non-critical or calibration not required. This is applied to determine the calibration requirements for instruments. It's important because it aids in correctly classifying discrepancies or deviations as critical or not. Reference only instrumentation must be identified as such to some level of degree to avoid process control decisions made on non-calibrated instruments. All calibrations must comply with calibration specification data sheets, which contain calibration uh, frequency or interval, ranges, test points, and use points. Beyond providing correct and consistent calibration instructions for the technician, these data sheets are very important toward proving calibration and timeline in the event of a deviation investigation. This supports audit trails during periodic audits as well as investigation for corrective actions in response to deviations. The calibration work routine must be periodically audited and is expected to document, document calibration labor cost as in any process, continuous improvement should be a goal of any calibration program. Calibration program compliance creates checks and balances for program compliance. It allows calibrations to be recognized as valid because the program complies with accepted technical and quality metrology requirements. All applicable GMP calibration requirements should be documented in an approved and controlled document that governs the calibration program. When calibrations are performed, it's important to be able to trust the process by which they are executed. Qualification of the calibration process provides that trust. The qualification gives an instrument owner confidence that the calibration has been performed correctly. Here are the basic requirements. Each instrument is uniquely identified with a way to record performance history and current calibration status and is used appropriately for the intended function of that instrument. Calibration procedures are approved and include process range limits. Calibration standards and test equipment are more, usually four times more accurate than the required accuracy of the unit under test and are traceable back to national or international standards. Calibration personnel are appropriately trained. A change management process is included in the program. Calibration qualification means that the calibration process has been reviewed and found to be compliant with internationally accepted technical and quality metrology requirements. ISO 17025 is the international metrology quality standard to which calibration laboratories are accredited. 
Qualification services are provided by independent organizations that have been certified to do this type of work. Every large country typically has at least one qualification provider. For example, in the United States, the National Voluntary Laboratory Qualification Program, or NVLAP, A2LA, and LAB are qualification providers. In England, the United Kingdom Qualification Service, UCAS, is the qualification provider. International agreements ensure that once a calibration process is accredited in one country, any calibrations coming from that process can be accepted worldwide without any additional technical acceptance requirements. Calibrated contracted services methodology is intended to ensure that calibration performed by contractors is verified to meet the standards of the facility that is contracting the service. First, there's a fundamental question of whether MTE will be supported in-house at all. Is there a need for a calibration group based on current practice, MTE population, calibration requirements, and so on? This is a cost benefits analysis decision that compares in-house capability and benefit against the cost and administration of a contracted service. This may result in all calibrations being done in-house, contracting uh, only special calibrations, or completely outsourcing all calibration. It is the responsibility of the customer to have requirements that the contract laboratory must meet, and it is highly recommended that the customer audit the contract laboratory to those requirements. It's the responsibility of the contract laboratory to meet and or exceed those requirements with documented proof of processes and quality review of measurements. This means it's a great idea to audit potential calibration service providers to ensure that they can meet expectations. A good starting point is to put together a checklist for evaluating calibration providers. By having a list ahead of time, you'll avoid a lot of problems and save time when evaluating vendors. Review your quality manual to determine what is required of your vendors. If these requirements are not stated in the quality manual, augment your quality manual to include subcontract requirements for calibration providers. The checklist elements will be covered in more detailed training on this function. For now, suffice it to say that not all calibration service providers are the same. The bottom line is you have to decide what you need from calibration and then determine if a vendor can provide the type and quality of service that you need. Instrument lifecycle methodology establishes controls for replacing, reusing, quarantining, and disposing of instruments. Replacing and reusing instruments requires a change control procedure to ensure the integrity of the system associated with the instrument is undisturbed by the change. The process developed for this must focus on ensuring that instruments are always in a known condition and location. The purpose of instrument lifecycle methodology is to ensure that we never operate with an out-of-service instrument. Whenever calibrated instruments are removed from service, care must be taken to ensure that the instrument is physically removed from the area or clearly labeled out-of-service and quarantined. Quarantining means confined to a known location that is easily identified as for instruments that are not to be installed in a system. Sometimes an instrument will be disposed of for some reason rather than recalibrated. Disposing means removing an instrument from service and archiving all of the history associated with that instrument. When an instrument is changed out or replaced, the old instrument information is archived in accordance with a procedure or process and the new information is substituted for that location record. Here's a summary of calibration administration function. The calibration program must be compliant, controlled, documented, and audited. Calibration processes must be qualified, regardless of who performs them. Contracted calibration services must comply with required standards. And instrumentation status must be controlled throughout the instrument life cycle. This concludes calibration administration process descriptions. Thank you for your participation.